Hello, this is Marvin Lindsay. I'm the senior pastor of First Presbyterian Church in Columbia. And I'm Preston Turley, uh, director of the Offering Worship Service and Euchre Campus Ministry. And we're here to talk about this Sunday's worship service, but um, I'm really not sure what's about to transpire because we're going to play Stump the Preacher. Preston's going to ask me a question about the gospel lesson that I'm preaching on this Sunday, and then I will attempt to answer it. So, um, Preston. Yes, so in verses 32 and 33 of our passage for Sunday, Jesus talks about or the language he uses is you know, being lifted up. He mm-hmm. said he talks about how he's going to be lifted up, and this is a reference to his coming uh, crucifixion, the mm-hmm. way that he's going to, to die. And he says, when people see this, that everyone, well, everyone will see it, and everyone will want to come to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so my question is very, very simple and very short. Why haven't they all come <laughs> to Jesus? Why do we still have people who, um, not even necessarily of different faith traditions, but people who um, deny Christ's divinity and people who believe that there just there is no God that we're just uh, here as um, organic bits of flesh and things like that. So, right. um, if this was was this prophecy, was this uh, is this in reference to something that's to come? You know, even in you know after our life on this earth. So, talk about that a little bit. <laughs> All right. Well, so I haven't written the sermon yet. So, <laughs> okay. The answer. Uh, this is going to be preliminary answer. Um, but yeah. He, so he says. When, oh, when I'm lifted up, I will draw all people to right, myself. Right. So, or some some translations even say all things mm. to myself. So, one 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 possibility of answering that question is is to say that the lifted up refers not only to the um, the cross, but also to his resurrection and right. to his ascension. So that this process of drawing uh, all people to himself is is an ongoing process because he is ascended he's reigning over uh, creation and he has sent out his spirit to uh, uh, to to preach the gospel so that this so that this is in progress mm-hmm. um, and so that might be one reason why um, it does I mean it, it seems like at this point you know like that did not happen in 33 AD mm-hmm. you know um, but I think so uh, but you, you raise a good question, and the question is so. And I've been actually thinking about this in terms of writing the sermon. Is so, what are the limits of salvation? Mm-hmm. I mean, he says, "I will uh, draw all people, or even all things, to myself." Now, last week we had this gospel lesson where he says, "Those who do not believe are condemned already," um, and then this week he says, "I'm going to draw all people to myself." So. Uh, and I, I think that that, um, like, like last week and this week's gospel lessons kind of get at a real um, dilemma or a, a real, like, uh, perplexing thing in the scriptures. I think in the, in the New Testament, well, I think what I would say is there is enough, um, there's enough talk about judgment and condemnation and hell mm-hmm. for me to not, I can't say all people will be saved. Mm-hmm. But then there are enough um, there are enough references like this. I will draw all things to myself. Um, God wills that all should be saved, as in I think First or Second Timothy. Um, Colossians says that um, that that all things will be united in Him. There's enough of that kind of talk to give me hope, right? That all people will be saved. So. I, and that's what one of the one of the Reformed confessions. I think it's it's either the Heidelberg Catechism or the Second Helvetic Confession says we should have good hope for all people and not rashly judge anyone to be reprobate. So, um, so that's I guess that's my kind of muddled answer to the question. No, that's great. I mean, it's ultimately it's a message of of love, but ultimately a message of of hope as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. So no, I appreciate that. That's yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, I have to get. Back to writing the sermon now, so right. and it <laughs> so, will be completed on Sunday. So it will be, join us for worship. Yes, at, uh, at nine o'clock, in fact, because worship yeah. starts. Well, the offering, our contemporary service, starts at nine, uh, and then our traditional service is at eleven. Uh, we have uh, Sunday school for all ages in between at ten o'clock. Uh, so, so we invite you uh, to come to church this Sunday morning at First Pres. We'll see you then. All right, thanks. Bye.